Hi there, um, today I'm going to do a quick video tutorial on how to remove a background from your images. Um, really handy if you're doing e-commerce photos, um, need bigger background images for your website, anything like that where you can actually cut away all the stuff that you don't want in there and then use that as an isolated image. You can lay that over the top of some, another image um, to give you a context anything like that. So this one that we're going to do today is gorgeous flowers and this one's going to be a little bit easier because of the contrast between the subject and the background. Um, but there's a little trick that we found in our Photoshop. So go ahead and open up your image in Photoshop. Now this isn't going to be quite as easy if you've got an image like this one where the background kind of melts into the subject. So that one's going to be a bit trickier. It still can be done and there's still lots of ways about it. It's just going to take us a little bit longer to do it. So we're going to go back to this one and start here. And we're going to go into our selection tools. So we've got our magic wand and your magic wand basically, depending on your tolerance up here, which is how much it's going to pick up, you can keep selecting and you can actually click shift and select and select all of those tiny little pieces as well or you can just up your tolerance a bit more and it will actually you'll see the dancing ants as I like to call them around the image and you can pretty much you can go through and if you're hitting shift at the same time you can actually expand on that area or option or alt you can actually remove from that area so if you've got bits that you want to keep obviously as you can see I'm clicking this and because my tolerance is so high when I'm clicking a white shape here it's actually selecting part of the background as well telling me that that shade is very similar to the background that we've got going on so it's not going to be the best way to do it if you've got stark contrast, you can do it this way, but it's a hit and miss option. So we're going to use our selection and remove that. Now there's another couple of ways as well. We've got our quick selection tool, which is the one that we're going to dive into in a minute. We've also got the lasso tool. If you are super comfortable with tracing, which I am not, and as you can see by my really dodgy lines there and I don't find tracing with a mouse is at all comfortable in any way shape or form. I do also have a drawing tablet and a pen which can be a little bit easier but I still find this method's a bit hit and miss. So we'll deselect that. You can also do the polygon lasso tool a little bit easier and you'll actually click around every point does take a while to do it. I used to always do it this way. Um, you got quite deep into it. When you start doing things like hair that need to be removed, this is an absolute nightmare because you're actually clicking at every point where the selection needs to turn. So it can take hours. Um, and then if you click roll, you go back to the start. So that basically makes you want to scream at your computer or drink lots and lots of wine. Either way, the next go you have is not going to be as great. So with this one, you just keep clicking. Um, and it is a great way to do it. You can get in nice and close. You can zoom right up. So what I did there was Control and Plus will get you to zoom in. And as you work around the canvas, you can just use your space bar and your mouse to take you to another part of the image. So with this one, you can see that we're getting in there pretty deep. Um, but as you can tell by my clicking, it's going to take us a while to actually get around the entire image. Um, so like if we go back up to here, that's how much we've done. We can cut that out pretty good it's a bit choppy but it is pretty good so we're going to remove that and deselect that so that's one way to do it um, 
doesn't give you a really fine edge, but it does give you a nice edge. What we're going to go back to though is our quick selection tool. Now this tool does have a couple of options up here. So we're going to start with a new selection and basically drag it around the parts that we don't want. And you'll see it will just expand as we're doing it. And it's actually connected that up all the way around. Um, so we want to make sure we've got our minus here because this part of our image is actually a selection. We want to take this part out. I have to add this part in. And you can actually get right in close and do all of those finicky little bits and drag them out and actually add them to your selection. Again, it's not 100% foolproof. Um, none of this ever is really you're going to have to get right up close and drag and drag and drag and drag. Um, we've got this part here, so what you can do, because that's going to be like that, you can just go back over and select the parts that you do want. And that's for some reason not going to let me do that space in between. And as you can see from this, we've got a pretty good selection going on. What you want to do with this one is just make sure that where your brush is doesn't hit the part of the image that you want to select. And you can see it's a it's a pretty good cutout and by far the quickest way out of all of the options that we've seen. So that part's just going to be, and some parts you can just cut over. No one's going to know that that was there in the original photo. Only you are, so we can definitely cut over that. Um, we've got a part here, so let's see what we can get into this part. You can get most of the way in. We're going to zoom that right in so that we've got the tiniest brush possible and get into there as well. At least probably overkill, you probably don't need to go this far. Um, but just to show you that you can, it's there as an option as well. So we're going to zoom back out on that and that's at our 100%. And what I'm going to do is open a new image and I'm going to copy. So we can make sure that one's selected. And for copy, it's Control and C. Now I'm running on a Mac, so these options are for Mac as well. And then Control and B will actually paste. So what we've actually got here, if we take that away, we've actually got the background. So what we're going to do to start with is go onto this layer. Now, the way that you can do it as well is if you go backwards, so make sure we've got that selected again, you can actually go ahead and select inverse and that will give you the flower shape. So if I copy, make sure that your layer that you are actually copying is selected, copy, and go into our new layer and paste. So that's our image as it stands, which is a phenomenal representation. We've got loads and loads of those details out. We've still got things here. There's a little bit here that I can see. Depending on what background you're putting that on though, it's going to be whether it makes a difference. What we can actually do is turn this layer back on and we can go with adjusting that even. So we're going to use that stick to the clipping mask, which will make it only work on that background. We'll turn our flowers off for the minute. And what we can do is actually blow that out a little bit. will give us a little bit clearer. We'll take a lot of the imperfections out of the background. Um, as I said, this one's a pretty easy image to work on as well, so there's lots of definition between one and two. The flowers still look great. Um, obviously, they look uh, not so realistic anymore, but we've gone ahead, and what we're going to do is we can pop that one back on, and we've actually got the original settings on our flowers 
and our background's now clear. So we can go ahead and use that image as it is. If you're putting it onto a website, you can obviously, with this as well, you can't actually see that there's a great difference where we've got those little bits that are left. There's not a massive difference in the background, so that's great. We can go ahead and save that and use that one as is. We can also remove both of these and go back to a transparent image as well and use that completely transparent onto whatever background. Um, we can also add in, let's go with adding in a different background. So we can add in a solid color and make that anything you want. You obviously get a, the edges aren't going to be the greatest, but you can make that into a nice tonal color. Not going to make a difference as far as your edges. You're still pretty good covered. You will notice though the little holes. So you can go back over them again. Um, again, just your direct selection tool there and just get in there nice and tight, blow it right up and just go over the white bits that you want to get rid of. I'm going to turn that one off. You can also do a pattern. So we've got a massive collection of patterns here. You can put that onto any kind of background that you'd like. Again, you're seeing the white but it gives you a great option as far as what you can do with your file now. So there's lots and lots of things that we can actually work on there. But as I said, I quite like the background blown out. So that works really well for what I'm after. And I'm pretty happy with that. I don't need to go and touch it up these little tiny holes, but it gives me a great place to start. So there you have it. That's how I remove a lot of the backgrounds out of the work that I'm doing. It's a hit and miss thing. You can always play with it. And the best part is if you take a copy of your image, don't save it um, as the original. Keep a copy of it and you can actually just keep playing with them and refining the process. And as you get more experience with using it, you'll get better at it as well and it will become a lot easier um, and a lot quicker to do. But there you go, that's how I remove the background of my images in Photoshop. If you've got any questions, let me know and I will see you next time.